This video is gonna explore the ups and downs of starting and managing a pole vault club and maybe even starting a pole rental business. Oh, and you'll get to know Stephen Caroline White on a whole deeper level. All right, here's a story I heard in college. Did you guys hear about what Flight Deck Athletics is doing? They're renting out their poles to people and then when the people come to pick them up, they put them in a pole bending device and they bend the poles and go, see, it bends, it doesn't break, it's safe. Here you go and they send them off. However long goes by that they rented their poles from, they bring the poles back and Steve and Caroline White go, remember that pole bending device? I'm gonna stick it back in there, give it a bend again. If it breaks, you just bought a broken pole. If it doesn't break, you rented it. Transaction's complete, thanks for taking care of my poles. Now, you have an option. You can either put it in the device and bend it, or you can just buy the pole now. So you have to ask yourself that question. Did you take care of those poles? Well, did ya? Punk. This video is brought to you by a book that I wrote called The Pole Vault Toolbox. Actually, Caroline helped edit this thing and tell me what sucked and didn't suck, so. Head over to team com to get a copy of the book for yourself to help you on your pole vault journey. With the pole vault book, I started a thing called the Pole Vault Initiative where we take $5 from everything sold on team com. We put it into a pot and when that pot gets to $1,000, we buy $1,000 in pole vault poles and donate those poles to a pole vault program. But Sean, how do you pick a winner? I randomly draw a name from somebody who purchased something from team com which could be you. If you get a book, your name is in the drawing. So you get a book to learn how to pole vault and you get a chance to win some pole vault poles for your program. Win, win. All right, so if you already have a copy of the Pole Vault Toolbox, you there is a lot of talk about Steve and Caroline White. The drills I've even named after Caroline herself. This is the Caroline, and this was the first podcast I made um, that never existed. <laughs> it just never came to fruition. But there's a lot of nuggets of good information in here, so here it is for you. All right, so we're here with Steve and Caroline White. Hi. Hi. Of uh, Flight Deck Athletics, Hi. and I. I didn't know where to start with you guys, but I thought a cool place to start was every time I come over, your garage is full of poles. And how many how many do you have in there right now, Steve? Uh, I I don't honestly know the the tight number, but it's somewhere around 550. 550 poles. I tease him that some people like shoes. For him, it's poles. Yep. Did Caroline ever tell you we we're gonna make a video that we needed to? Uh, get you some help and we're gonna have an intervention. Yeah, we're gonna an do intervention. An intervention. I was gonna come in and it was gonna be uh, what, yeah. baited with there's a pole sale and I come in and there's everyone in chairs in a circle. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. I didn't know that. But, <laughs> we but did. that we would had be it a planned. good move. <laughs> <laughs> we had planned this out of practice yeah. a while back. That would be all right. So we're uh, we're at your house right now, so if there's any interruptions. Yeah, the you'll hear in kids in the background. It, it helps with the ambiance. Um, so I, I, I was really curious like how Flight Deck started. Like how you guys got to 500 and whatever poles in your garage. So 500 poles started with, uh, the, I had a problem in, uh, <laughs> in, I've had, and, it, yeah. and it continues. It's just manifested differently now. When I was uh, in high school, I didn't have the equipment I needed. And so, and so I got beat by people who were just better funded. And when I went to college, uh, all, the coach promised to buy uh, everything I needed and did, and I did quite well. And he gave a lot more than just that, but polls was definitely part of it. And when I got out of college, th the transition out of college to try to keep doing something you like doing is very difficult. You can't get access to facilities. You don't have access to the polls because the polls are back still at the university. You have no coach. Uh, and so Flight Deck was really a kind of an ongoing, how do we solve these things? Uh, how do we solve uh, poles and equipment for the kids that need it? So it's not just the rich kids who get it. How do we solve enough coaches? How do we solve access for post collegiates? How do we, how could, could all of these things actually come out of the same solution? But Steve's first answer was, I'll just buy them for them. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was, and every high school kid he had that he was coaching, he was like, I know they can go higher if they just have these next three sticks. And so I don't know if every other paycheck was going to it was buy a, poles it, for high school kids that it was at least every other paycheck for a few years. 50% of my take home pay for a few years. Uh, and then and then we got married. And I didn't love that <laughs> <laughs> habit that he had developed of spending that much money 
on yeah. high school kids who were going to graduate in a minute. And then we had all these polls and mostly they were being donated to the high schools. It wasn't like you were necessarily even keeping them all the time, I don't think. But um Eventually, <laughs> Steve's not. <nodding over laughs> well, there, there wasn't tight record keeping yeah. initially. Yeah. So yeah. So eventually, I just said, "Look, your hobby. And I don't care if you keep doing this, but it can't keep costing us money. I don't care if it makes any money, but come up with some way to like fund this, so that it's not. So we don't have to live in this tiny upstairs apartment above a house for the rest of yeah, our, above some others <laughs> for the rest of our forever lives. with a roommate. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so. Yeah, so Flight Deck started out of that, it, which was, all right, could we, uh, the co-op idea never seemed to quite work as far as, hey, let's all kick in and 10 coaches and we'll all have this big pool of poles and because, hey, we might both have the same need and now, so it never could quite work as a co-op. Um, but the, all right, I'll buy it. I'll start it off as kind of a blockbuster video. You can check out the poles you need, uh, exchange them. and uh, And that's really kind of the concept of, uh, every three poles we'd rent, we'd buy another pole. And so right away it turned into, uh, it stopped costing me half of my take home pay. And, and, <laughs> and that was awesome. <laughs> and, and turned into a slow growth of poles where every three rented, I could, I could buy another pole. That's awesome. Yeah. So didn't you, if I remember right. So for you guys who don't know the Caroline white drills, that's who I'm with right now. Caroline <laughs> white, we named him after you now. Like, so I everyone. Know. Yeah. I don't know if I can take credit for them or not, but they I love don't know. it. <laughs> I just did the Caroline Marjo. But um, so I remember back when I was jumping or when you were coaching me, you were telling me that you even had to open an account without telling Steve. Oh yeah, I, I um, took a year off between college and graduate school, and was just coaching gymnastics full time, which was really fun. And if anyone gets a chance to do that, that was a great year. I enjoyed that. But yeah, I did come home at one point after we'd been married a little bit and just said, "Honey." I opened a savings account and your name's not on it <laughs> and all my checks are going in there and he looked at me and he goes you know that's probably a really good idea <laughs> <laughs> and that's how we were able to get our first house was, yeah, yeah yeah it wasn't yeah polls all, all polls was at that point was this how to get it to not costing yeah right? and be a good service project to a lot of a lot of kids who could need you know need access um, so at that I point, can trust it with my bank account now. But. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> right. it took a while. It took a while. <laughs> There's some training. Our trust has grown. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but but at first that was just really good managing of your new husband. That's yeah. Good. yeah. <laughs> so did did it start out? It, did it start out for you to keep jumping, or when did it morph into like helping the kids, or was it all kind of a wash? It. Yeah, it started. Yeah, it all started with kind of the all at the same time. Uh, I had my own set of poles for myself before the, the renting thing and the flight deck thing happened. Um, but then it was, all right, we're doing summer camps. And I know I can see that if a kid had these other poles, I really didn't like that, that uh, pole early. So at this point in the early 2000s, late 90s, uh, the, the poles that were available, I viewed them as discriminatory. It, we had really good lines for boys. But for girls, the market and the manufacturers just hadn't really caught up yet uh, on how to build a really good 11-foot pole or a really good 12-foot. You know, you were you were on 12-foot poles for junior high, and then puberty hit, and you weren't on 12-foot poles anymore. I mean, that was the, the – there wasn't a market then with girls that changed, and the market caught up, and that was good. But so I knew that – so I was always in pursuit of getting the right equipment for the kids because I knew how well that could that could improve. And then uh, a, a mentor coach for me had said years ago, and, and this still guides the way I approach this stuff, is for a lot of people, a lot of people are really, really good for track and field. And we know who they are. They're all, they're all the people in our sport who we refer to by a single name. Um, but then there's there's a lot of people that track and field is really good for. And that's really where my passion was in doing this, was how many kids are going to get their own uh, confidence, uh, grow in their own cap capabilities and beliefs in themselves through doing this event. And, uh, and so it shouldn't be that just because uh, you have to make a 10 pound jump or they didn't make 11 foot poles. You know, you had to go from 10 eights to 11 sevens. And, you know, so where are the 11s? And then, you know, Gil makes 11s. Okay, good. So we'll get 11s. And, and so where, how could we do that to better serve all of the kids? Because all of those kids in a minute 
when I say in a minute, I mean in 10 years are going to be parents themselves and they're the future customer base uh, to have. The, so we want them to have good, like pole vault's own sustainability is also in treating the 14 year old correctly because that 14 year old is themselves 14 years away from being the, the parent who's saying you should try this or not. Um, and, and that matters. So, uh, so, so that for me was all about, it was all again, all wrapped up in the same thing. Uh, the the post collegiate could coach the high school kid, but they'd need the polls. Here's the polls. Uh, that's going to help the kid who then, you know, a few years later is 30 years old, saying, "And I want my kid to do it." Um, so the whole thing is cyclical and and grows upon itself. Well, and pole vault was good for you too. I mean, you went to college because you wanted to keep pole vaulting, not yeah, because you were necessarily going to college. Whereas I was going to go to college first, and, yeah, and then pole vaulting was part of it. <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Well, I went, and that just happened as a uh, right timing thing and a happenstance thing that I did pole vault at all but I wasn't going to college for athletics I was going to college I was always going to college but for you no, that I wasn't to an automatic pole vault. And, and because you did that you realized you were actually a pretty good student you know yeah yeah so I mean my <laughs> whole life really followed this one and this changed who I am and how I see everything that's uh, exactly what happened to me too I, I went I went I wasn't even going to go to college and then I was like oh you can keep pole vaulting if you go there <laughs> yeah, and then exactly <laughs> 10 years later, you have a master's degree and you're like, oh, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah, I guess huh. I'm going to keep doing the pro thing. And exactly. Yeah, just how does it keep going? And yeah. teaching was one way to coach without doing all the coaching lifestyle of moving and changing towns and doing all of that. It could be both stable and help kids. Again, in my my version was how many kids could we help? Not how, and not to judge others, but it wasn't about how many people could we coach to the Olympic trials. It was how many kids could we help and grow and and uh and impact in a very positive way i think that's why i get along with you guys so well i think we're on that same yeah. mission there well i have as much fun watching a kid who you were sure couldn't go eight feet go eight feet than i do for the kid who oh. jumps 14 for the first time or you know or 16 for the first time right my dad yeah. has a story about that uh i won't say her last name gina but she wanted eight feet so bad and took until her senior year and she hit it and it hit bounced up landed stayed. back on the pegs and stayed and she jumped off like she won the gold medal at the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it's all about like that I'm way more excited about that than a kid who jumps 17 feet and just walks right because think the of the work she did exactly yeah and it's the, the perseverance effort. and the resilience that she showed to get there that's so admirable I love that that's it so you, you're talking about college a little bit too so if I remember right women's pole vault just started when you were in college yeah so I went to school in my hometown because my mom worked there um, and so I got a tuition waiver, which was fabulous. Take advantage of those if you get one. <laughs> um, and it was the first year they had pole vault for women in the U.S. at the collegiate level. I'm that old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what year and, was that? Do you remember? Um, well, I guess it was the 98 track season. So okay. 97 was when I started fall of 97. Um, and my roommate's sister, by chance, was on the track team. And she came by and was like, hey, they're looking for kind of anyone but gymnasts to try pole vaulting and we had both been gymnasts and she was like do you want to try this with me I was like sure I'll probably quit in the spring was totally yeah, right. <laughs> the entire conversation um and yeah that flippant decision you think about the decisions that you agonize over like which car to buy or which college you know all those types of things that are big decisions which house to buy I made this in a second just yeah sure probably quit in the spring and that changed my whole life yeah, so how'd you meet Steve from there then? Well. <laughs> at, at track, at track yeah, meets, po- yeah. Yeah, oh, pole at track meets. Uh, Yeah, well, I, I, I saw her before she saw me. Yeah. And, uh, and then there's a fine line between, you know, persistence and stalking. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, yeah, and so I, I manufactured every way I could to make sure that I was uh, in her space. You got any and, stalking stories, Steve? <laughs> Well, he just the, called a lot. The first time, the first time I, the first time I noticed her, I heard her, and uh, her coach, her college coach. This is right after it was at the University of Minnesota. It was indoor, the first indoor conference meet for the women, and but it was the day after, and her coach Paul Herda is a great guy and loves saying, just slapped, you know, bad humor, bad jokes, dad jokes, and things like that. And he said he said some something dumb. And it was ha ha ha, and but she, th- this, I heard this young lady rip him up and down, just like in five words or less, just slam the door on. It's my most attractive quality, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I lean forward and I'm like, who on earth said that? And 
my best friend who I was talking to at the time said, I think she's the one who won the won the meet yesterday. And I said, if I could, you could look at a face like that and never get tired of the view. But you could look at a face like that for the rest of your life and never get tired of the view. Oh. And at that moment, I didn't know that coming up on my over my shoulder on my blind side was the girl that I was dating at the time. Oops. Who heard that? <laughs> and, uh, that went poorly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't notice Steve at this point. <laughs> no, no, no. So then it was, yeah, it was another six months or so before. Uh, I think it was at the, actually the outdoor conference meet and I was officiating it. Oh yeah. I thought and you were then, a total jerk. Yeah. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. So he it, was super aggressive wind, about how we were supposed to behave and stuff. And I was like, who's this guy? <laughs> yeah. Cause I had the high school kids there learning and watching and seeing what to on purpose. So they were being bartenders and, and setting standards and stuff like that. But but I had been at meets where people were rude to the officials. And so as the head official for the vault, I was like, be nice to these young ladies here. These high school kids are working here. And so anyway, apparently I was pretty assertive about it. <laughs> it's like, okay, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was fine. No, and then we, I don't know, we're at a St. Cloud State camp, I think, where huh? you were coaching and had all your athletes there. And they had invited us um, as athletes, as collegiate women, to come and kind of demo and coach and participate and whatever because we were still really new too we were really green um yeah and yeah we hung out a little so, bit there but i don't know it was a yeah it was it was it was a really slow yeah yeah um, a lot of stocking it sounds like no yeah. i'm just kidding yeah, yeah it was a lot of <laughs> uh, well that was my words but yeah but yeah it was a lot of like okay no, how do i work. do this how do i yeah how do i how do you manufacture bumping into somebody when there's not a a need or you don't there's nothing natural about that yeah. so how how far were you guys away when, when were you still in college at the time mm -hmm. steve no steve's eight years older than me yeah oh okay yeah so i was done in teaching and she was still in college and so uh yeah so then it was okay well there's summer jumping opportunities and and then fall and then yeah so it took a bit that's awesome yeah yeah i was pretty reluctant to <laughs> But it, forward with any but of it this. worked you know so but he just kept calling me and finally i agreed to go out to coffee with him to like tell him to stop calling me <laughs> <laughs> and it was like the most fun date ever. yeah because we so. both were hoping it was the last date ever yeah because <laughs> this is gonna be, this is That's not it. convenient yeah and so yeah but. so we were boldly honest all the way through and that was really awesome yeah. all the way through yeah not to go down your relationship but that's fascinating to me because <laughs> you got you guys always seem to have just like this connection that seems rare that you don't see all the time which oh well, thanks not not to We're, dive in and explore it but i'm super no. curious about well, it well that now we've been we just celebrated our 20th christmas together wow yeah so that's so that part cool. that part was fun um yeah. but yes it, it, yeah i've now spent more of my life with him than without him which is weird that's so weird. Oh, that thought didn't even cross my head. Yeah, no, it I'm happens. Getting married in the yeah, summer, so. it'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's segue into uh. So you guys, um, it's not really a joke, but you hear that you guys, Caroline was a women's pole vault coach at the University of Minnesota. Now she's coaching both men's and women's. But when I was there for for years, Steve was the the head men's coach. So you guys were coaching both men's and women's pole vault, but you were doing it for free. Yeah. which I always blew my mind. I thought that was the <laughs> coolest thing ever. Really. How, how did that happen, I guess? How did you guys end up doing that, coaching at a D1 school? And So she started She started it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. really it's Caroline's fault. Yes. Yeah. Um, I did. Well, yeah, Gary yeah. Wilson had called, called up. and You had a few athletes. They had a few athletes. No, they just had one. They had Monica Stern. Oh, right, because um, the others had just graduated. Up. Yeah, so, yeah. and their coach had left or whatever, and... He called and asked if I wanted to coach at the U. And I said, I don't really think I do. <laughs> Which I don't think was the answer he was <laughs> expecting or hoping for. But I kind of had a preconceived idea in my head of what Division One athletics was. And I didn't know that I wanted to be a part of that or whatever. And he's like, well, will you just come and have lunch with me? And I was like, okay. So I went and I had lunch with him and Coach Bingo, who's the head coach now. Um, and I don't... <laughs> I, I'm kind of surprised they brought me on actually because I was very assertive and like clear about what I would and wouldn't do because <laughs> I didn't really want to do this but I just you know I was like it can't cost me anything you have to pay for everything I still want to pole vault so you have to bring my poles with when we travel <laughs> like I asked for all this stuff and I don't know he said yes um, so I decided I'd try it for a year and I had one athlete 
and she was a fifth year senior. So she was 23 and I was 24. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Which was kind of odd too and was really fun. Um, but I got over there and I looked at their polls and they just had a mess of polls. And so I went back to Coach Wilson and said, you know, this is what I want. And I asked for 25 sticks for this one girl, right? <laughs> Steve already had him in his garage. So. <laughs> yeah, he probably did, yeah. So I asked for 25 polls for her. Um, and he's like, you promise you're gonna stay here for a little while? And I was like, well, you know, so far it's been fun. I'm not planning on leaving. And he, Threw the pen, threw the pencil he was holding across the room at Bingo. Poor Bingo. He was like, "Cause if I have who's, to do, who's now the head who's coach? Now the of head all coach. It. He's like, because <laughs> if he has to coach the vault, he's he's worth as much as this pencil or whatever." And he threw it at him. So he bought them all for me. Like I ran from the room and placed the order because I was scared he'd change his mind and come to his senses. We used every one of those polls. Wow. That year, and she went all the way from being like a twelve nine vaulter to a four thirty. She made the trials. It was a crazy year, and then I was hooked. <laughs> yep, that was your first year. That was my first year. Wow, first year, yeah. And four thirty. You can imagine at the trials, who who gets uh, stopped for their credentials of the coaches going into the coaches area. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it was like the who's who, you know. Um, it wasn't the first names of all the coaches of all the big schools. It was who's the five four <laughs> five two woman walking in. <laughs> yeah, so it looks like she's in college coming through. Yeah, they all just streamed in ahead of me, you know, Earl and. Jan and Karan and all those guys. Yeah, that must have been pretty cool. And they're like credential. I was like, I oh, know I really have one. Yeah, it was fun. Well, and you could stand in front of all of them and not obscure their view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's always that. <laughs> true, true. So then, so then when did you come on, Steve? Uh, three years after. Three so years. Three, three years after the guy side had said, uh, had said yes to a whole lot of walk-ons. Um, a whole lot of walk-ons who were you know d1 walk-ons and so all right well we we they made the invite to too many kids and counting on that only a third of them are going to actually show and they all showed and mm -hmm. so at the moment when when fall track began when fall training began uh, a third of the team was going to be pole vaulting at one time or another as either as a multi or a specialist. And they, wow. they went, uh, oops, uh, we need somebody. Hey, Caroline, will you do it? And she said, no, um, <laughs> not surprised, but, no. <laughs> but, uh, but, but yeah, Steve, maybe he'll do it. And so they did. And, and I came in with, uh, uh, very much the whole time, the, uh, the majority of the time I was there, I was really certain this would be my last year. And so I had 11 last years wow. um, in, in a row of, I really thought this is it. This is, this was a fun run and oh wait, and so I'm still back the next year and I'm still back the next year. And so the first year I had uh, all the red shirts and, uh, and uh, Henry was born, our first, first kid was born that year. And so the, because I had all the red shirts, I wasn't going to the big 10 meet as a coach. Uh, there was no reason. None of the kids that I coached were there. But uh, Caroline had just given birth to Henry. and uh, yeah, I think and, he was three and a half or four weeks old. Yeah. So he went to a Big Ten meet before he was one month old. <laughs> oh, and uh, You've been to Penn State, honey. He's and, sitting here with us. <laughs> and uh, and, if, and if, if she was going, because she had to coach the women, well, then Henry was going, and she needed somebody to handle Henry. So the, the women's team purchased my ticket first ticket to go to Big Tens uh, because I had to be on baby duty. Well, then, since I was there, uh, sure, I wind up coaching the, the, the one kid, the one multi-kid who I who got in at the last minute, and and uh, he went 15-inch uh, PR at the meet. Wow. After his teammates had pulled all of his poles out to make more room in the bag for their own poles. <laughs> it was really, really nice of them. <laughs> because the at the time that that the at the time the, the, the team would travel one bag of poles. And so if you could get one more of yours in if you pulled somebody else's out, well they didn't all work really well together and have anybody overseeing it. So <laughs> so two boys pulled out all these other poles that they didn't need to shove in more for them. So we got there and the decathlete who's about to score uh, maybe uh, has Didn't nothing have no sticks. <laughs> and so I pull out all the poles and quickly like uh, assemble a, a, a loose line of what's what he's now go to this pole all the poles he's never been on now hold here on this pole now hold I'm doing everything on grip poles changes we're changing spirits to carbons to pacers to this everything is from 16 then back to a 14 6 just to manage flexes to keep 
this really good athlete from killing himself and clearing a pit <laughs> and also how to score. Uh, he wound up, yeah, having a 15-inch PR that day. Wow. Uh, and uh, and that landed me the job, for real. Yeah. Uh, and was there the following 10. Jeez. Uh, but, I, yeah, but even that first year, I wasn't really coaching the vaulters. I was just coaching the multis and a couple uh, in the vault yeah. and, uh, and, and all these red shirts. But, yeah, the next year then, it was, it was the whole deal. Wow. So 11 years you did that. 11, yeah. 11 of volunteering. And then... And, uh, Caroline's now in 16. Yeah, and 16. So that's crazy to think about. It is. So can you guys do a, like a little rundown of some of the athletes that you've had come through, maybe PRs or... Um, uh, I'm really uh, bad NCAA at this. Marks. I need Pete Miller here. He's our rain man on the U, <laughs> on the U staff. <laughs> he knows everybody's stats. He knows everybody's stats. And stuff. You don't have to do them all, but yeah. just maybe a couple of memorable I mean, Monica ones. was kind of my first big splash. She was the first one? Yeah. Went that, to the trials. Yeah, that was fun. Alicia Rue was great. Um, At really least talented. Was when I was around. Yeah, like, we really talented age. Minnesota kid. Samantha Sonnenberg, another one of those kids that walks on the team and you never know, you know? Yeah. And she was funny because she came on a recruiting visit and said nothing. Really? Like, not a word. <laughs> and then she left, and I talked to her mom. Her mom was fun. And <laughs> Bingo called me. He's like, well, What do you think? I was like, She hates me. <laughs> like, like, she didn't say anything. She She's not coming. And then he called me the next day. He's like, She loved it here. She's coming. I'm like, You're kidding hitting me <laughs> but she was that same way as an athlete when she first started right. she wouldn't you know she'd vault she'd look at me she wouldn't say anything I'd ask her a question she'd just you know and finally I was like you know what I'm done coaching you until you say something and she took three or four vaults and I didn't say anything to her <laughs> and she said I felt slow on one I was like yeah it looked kind of slow yeah so on the next one we'll do this and after that she talked <laughs> that, that was it huh? yeah I remember thinking the same thing when you guys let me jump with you at the post collegiate thing it's like I don't think Sam likes me crashing the girls <laughs> practice all yeah, the time yeah and then i made one dumb joke about like i don't know my pants you know, being 40 years old or yeah. something and then she was like they are 40 years old they look terrible you should wear something else <laughs> that, that, like was just, <laughs> that was it that was it that broke it yeah. yeah so she was fun um trying to think of some of the other ones who do you got yeah um yeah but well ben peterson was the f uh the first person i was lucky enough to coach over 18 so that was fun and uh ncaa number two uh, indoor uh zach was well i got to call your standards on the day caroline set me up so you're got you over what 18 one yeah on oh that, yeah uh, sean francis, sean francis. Oh. he makes my list <laughs> <laughs> appreciate it i'm happy yeah. i can be on the list yeah <laughs> you were running through your gopher athletes yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah so that was that was fun that guy yeah that was a fun day that was um, really fun uh mm -hmm. Zach coaching Zach over over his bars or coaching him while he did it and and made 18 and All-American and and what a crazy run that was with breaking a pole at the warm-ups of the NCAAs and then his hand and arm are tingling and still pull it together to yeah get back cool. and go through I mean we just broke the pole that was the one that was needed and now a scripted warm-up turned into total ad lib on yeah, so Zach really, Zach and I really had it, uh, had really that the connection and the relationship and the dialogue all the way through that really was so tight. Where a single word or two from either of us and the other person knew exactly what next to say. Uh, ben and I, it wasn't, it never quite got to that level of uh, the 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 bigger the meet, the tighter he and I were. The bigger the meet, the better our connection was. Um, the lower stakes it was, and practices were. I was very, I'm very process oriented. Right. <laughs> um, so I can look at the same thing and see this micro thing that we were working on and see that it was better and, uh, uh, not better or wor not, uh, you know, not that one is better than the other. Uh, Ben grew me as a coach cause Ben's very much more product driven on, but it, if it doesn't go any higher, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, <laughs> he, he really helped me grow in that direction <laughs> and i needed to grow in that direction on yeah this is big 10 and this is d1 and you're right because hey wow you just did that significantly better and so now you can clear 16 beautifully when before it was not as beautiful it's still 16 and no one cares because it's big 10 yeah. um was I, he grew me uh out of uh in so many ways he and and uh and uh brock spandle uh both grew me out of 
uh, the D3 mindset that I had and the high school mindset of that, that I had and have still continue to have that the process and the and uh, the the doing it with quality and r- repeatability and consistency at some point when you're at the top it, it, but you got to go higher you right. got to still land it otherwise it's just pretty and neat and yes it's proficient but it doesn't score or place or win which at that upper level you need it to do i feel like that's a hard line to find for a lot yeah. of people because I, I feel like i'm a lot of the same way especially with high school kids it's very yeah if you do this if you build it bars will come yeah, kind right. of a thing, you know <laughs> yeah. and, and eventually they do usually at those lower levels but at the higher ones it's like take off and don't drive your knee if it makes you go at one point yeah. if that gets you over the higher bar like that's kind of what you got to do right now about as easy as it gets you just have to get over the bar that's it like there's no style points in this event well and we and she and i uh and in coaching with you uh i see you do this too where it uh at some point it doesn't matter if it goes higher like if it goes higher um then what is the crazy next craziest thing we'll say out loud in public because that's the cue that the kid needs in order to do one little bit better on technique the the first uh girls state champion in minnesota was 11 foot and i got to coach her and she and so they were they're a very christian family very very christian uh traditional conservative uh in values and in how they live and and uh very um wonderful people and i had to warn them i said so it turns out when when i scream to your daughter put your pants on she moves the pole in a way that goes way higher. So at the track meet, I don't want you to be alarmed, but <laughs> but I'm going to be tell, yelling at your daughter to put her pants on. Move like you're putting your pants on. And I don't so want... funny. You called me. You were like, what do you say to a gymnast who's doing this? Yeah. I was like, tell her to put her pants on. So he did. And then he, it worked. he goes, huh. That totally works. <laughs> yep. It's funny. Over the phone. But I had to warn the parents because, of course, I didn't want to be, you know, all of a sudden I'm in the principal's office as a teacher, a young teacher, trying to explain. So tell me why you're telling this young girl to put her pants on <laughs> in public <laughs> yeah. loudly. And no, it's a cue. It's OK. Anyway, the we parents, were, parents yeah. were really cool and it and it worked. And and uh, yeah. She went on to get a... a, a she went to a, Northern a, Iowa, right? She got some money to go to North, UNI, I think. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, we've had lots of great athletes. Your teammate, Leslie. Leslie, yeah. That was pretty Brought fun. Down too. Yeah. Um, she didn't go to Minnesota. I'm so disappointed. We'll get over that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get over it eventually, yeah, Leslie. She came down afterwards. Yeah, so. she came yeah. down after, but that was really fun. Um, Laura Massey, Blackledge now, was my first Big Ten champ, and that was maybe one of my most proud Big Ten champs and the lowest clearing. Um, we were, it was the first time the Gophers won the Big Ten meet on the women's side. And it was at Michigan State, and it was the coldest Big Ten meet I've ever been at. And it was pouring for the pole vault. And I can't believe they held it. I still can't believe we all went along with it, that the coaches didn't have, like, a sit-in on the pit. But we didn't. <laughs> we we did it. And um, my girls competed great. They went, like, one, four, six, or something like that. But it was because we had so many poles. And I started them competing from four lefts. They jumped two bars, those poles were soaked, they backed up a left, two bars, poles were soaked, backed up a left, two bars, and that's all it took. She won the Big Ten meet from a six left and jumped 12 feet or something. Everyone, 12 feet, it was the worst conditions I've ever seen. People were crashing in the box, it was sliding down the poles, it was pouring and 42 degrees. But you played the game, right? Yeah, and then the, she cleared that bar and the officials were like, where do you wanna to go to? I'm like, are you crazy? We're, we're leaving. <laughs> So she won the Big Ten on a make. Wow, that's <laughs> We never awesome. jumped again. But so yeah. that was kind of cool, too. But yeah, like uh, Joe Plensner, uh, you know, it was fun. When you're coaching, you get these dynamics where you where you know the other coaches and you can see their blind spots and you can see, and they can see mine, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and so there are times when it's like, man, I got, I got this. We got this. Here we go. This is, it's setting up. You can see the wind coming. Here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. And then randomly there we're now starting the 5k in the middle of the runway because we argued to get the runway with the wind right and so now we have this delay and now the delay wrecks the win and that cost joe plensner a championship one year and Oof. um uh leslie's husband uh jack uh yeah i mean we've had situations like that too where it's all going and then it just deviates sometimes in our favor sometimes not um 
one of my more proud uh, moments of coaching while I was at the U was uh, was coaching Adam Isaacson over 16 feet. I think that was the same day that you went that we did the 18. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was the same day. day. Yeah. That day yeah. Yeah. Like, and it was cool because I. Adam, he went to school up in Fargo South, right? Yeah. So I got to see him because I was at a, up at NDSU, so he yeah. was a lot of all those high school mates. So it was just, we had the, not like a good connection, but it was more of like a, one of those Fargo, North Dakota connections. Yeah, like, yeah I know this kid. <laughs> he's this a good cool. guy. Watching now he's coaching in South Carolina or then South Carolina? Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. But he, him going 16, uh, I was, uh, I was, um, that, that's one of my more proud Sticks moments in, in, in coach. Uh, Whereas there was people that I've coached over 17 that I know that 50 out of 100 coaches, 50 could have gotten that kid over 17 feet. And it was still good um, and still fun and still really hard work for the kid. But a lot of coaches could have. I don't really believe that a lot of coaches could have helped Adam get over 16. And so for that, I, I, yeah, Pitch I'm yourself really on the back. Yeah. I, I, that <laughs> was a really proud like, moment. Yeah. This I mean, was, yeah, just the there, connection you had between it. We, we definitely carry with the, the misses, right? We definitely walk away with those where it's like, oh, oh, that was totally my fault. And this is one where it's like, no, I'm really proud of that. That yeah. was really, that was really fun. And and he, I don't believe, I don't believe he scored for Big Ten. Um, broke a pole at the meet that and he was about to, but then the pole broke and smacked him up hard. What are you guys and, breaking all those poles for over on the men's side? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah anyway we could go down that hole but yeah, no, I'm just kidding. yeah. it could be but certainly it's not because we're yeah we certainly bring enough yeah well yeah. i think just, we both really like though too is when our athletes go on to coach i think that yeah. is the best one not just that they are successful as athletes for us but they learned enough to feel like they can go out and do it themselves and pass that on and spread that around i love that that makes me really proud and i don't know if it's just a learning thing i think it's like you you made it fun you know like you you made it look enjoyable and hey i want to go do this too because i don't know i i I take that more than just the having the knowledge part because i've met a lot of kids who've gotten the knowledge but then they they don't ever want to coach because they had a bad coach oh yeah you know so i think it's probably a combination of both for sure but i think you guys just have this positive like it was just easy to come down here i always joke that uh I jumped with Caroline, but if we ever got stuck, I'd go with Steve for one day, and then I'd have 10,000 ideas to come back with, and then <laughs> yes. we'd sit down and pick one to start working <laughs> yeah, on, to work on, and then we work on it for four months, and then Steve's like, well, we'll use one of the other 10,000 ideas I gave you the last time. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so, <true. yeah. laughs> so I had like the best of both worlds. I had the consistency and um, you know diligence from you, and then Steve. Steve was always like, I can see every little thing wrong and every little jump. What one do you want to work yeah, on? And then we let's go pick. From, which is great. I don't know. Was, you guys are a great team. Thanks. I'll say that. So, I think how, so. We try to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in all aspects. But So how, how do you guys approach uh, like a, a new, like, tech? let's talk a little technical stuff. Yep. Like, how do you guys approach the technique side of the pole vault? Or where, where did you learn it from? I know um, you went down to Bells a little bit and you learned a little from them. Or is that how it started and then it evolved over time? Or uh, My teammates and I used to play catch or guess the coach in college So because we didn't know anything and nobody knew coach? anything. So we would sit down at the pit when the men were jumping because all of us were terrible <laughs> when we were first starting. We didn't know anything about pole vault. Um, and we'd sit there and we'd watch the jump and we'd say to each other what we thought they should do as fast as we could. And then we'd listen to hear what the coach actually said. And then we'd watch and see how it worked. And we did that for ye- like years. It I've was, played that game too. It's <laughs> and we did it diligently every meet. That, I don't know. And who knows the quality of coaches that, you know, I don't remember who any of them were right. that we were listening to. But, but, but we were nothing, that's a good way. Yeah, to. but eventually we were seeing like, oh man, no, I think you should have done what I said. You know, (laughs) that was a terrible call. Eventually, you start to see when they say something that doesn't work at all. Yeah, or you learn because I would not have done that, and wow, that totally worked. Yeah, what in that worked? Yeah, and now you have something to go pick at and try to figure out. Yeah, so 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 early on, you're already taking reps without, or like mental reps without realizing you were taking mental reps. Yeah, well, I mean, we we knew we were behind. You know, all these guys had vaulted since seventh grade and. We were all 19 and had <laughs> never run track, you know. Right. Um, so we knew if we could learn it faster than everybody else learned it, then we'd be better than them. So, I mean, it was purely competitive. We just wanted to be good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for me, I, I started in seventh grade, and I was the worst kid on the team. Um, but I liked it. And uh, 
And in eighth grade, I'd moved up. I, don't know, I think I've gone from like 30th to 15th, but I was still last on the team. It was just a whole lot of people quit. And 10th, ninth grade, same <laughs> thing. I was up to third, but there was only three ninth graders. And by 10th grade, I was the top 10th grader, but there was only me as 10th grader. <laughs> and so, and then I went to state a couple of times because, you know, you start getting more attention when the coach has got, you know, when you're there and there's not 30 kids. So it started with that. So it started with uh, Kent Staley's coaching from Hamlin. He was the Hamlin head coach forever and ever and ever. And his one of his kids who uh, got a lot of lower back pain uh, from pole vaulting, stopped college pole vaulting, and uh, coached at his alma mater, which was my high school. And so I learned the Kent Staley pop-up and how to just do a straight pole swing up. And for, for Kent, that was all it. You had to drive your knee as hard as you could, and you had to learn a good pop-up. And if you had those two things. So all I learned through high school was drive your knee and how to do a pop-up. And sure enough, it worked all right. Um, yeah, we still have the best pop up in the game. Well, this is true. <laughs> that, and it, it, what's funny is it looks exactly like my high school coach, which who learned this from Staley. Um, so uh, then I, I went to lacrosse for a year, and uh, and I was the worst kid there. Uh, I didn't get along with the vault coach who was there at the time very well. We did not gel at all. Uh, they did not have the equipment I needed. So the smallest pull they had was bigger than anything I'd ever been on. And I spent six weeks getting rejected on that pole, landing out on the track. And so I had wicked shin splints. I'm pretty sure I had stress fractures, but you're 18 years old. So it just feels like really bad shin splints. So you keep jumping. Take some more Advil. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I remember uh, going into December, how happy I was that I could finally land on the front buns because that was softer than getting rejected back clear out onto the track. So I was still failing, but I was still failing less now. Um, so I really learned how to hit a pole because that was the only hope on getting into the foam. Because pain's a motivator. Right. <laughs> it's a good motivator. So I know I did half the meets of, of freshman year. I didn't know I could transfer mid-year. I didn't know anything. First kid to go to college in my family, so I did not know anything about any of it. And... Uh, but I transferred the next year to a college and to North Central College in Naperville, Illinois. And they, uh, the coach down there, Frank Ramoroso, said, "I'll get you any pole you need." He's still there coaching, and he did. True to his word, he did. Um, and uh, and he got me of uh, he got us access to having an old VHS camcorder thing about the <laughs> size of a suitcase, but it worked. Uh, he got us some elite video. Uh, and we would uh, put in video and try to watch it. And when you'd hit pause, it would have all the graininess going on because <laughs> it wasn't forehead VCR or whatever the <laughs> technology I mean, it was. So you had to put in Boobka, pull it out, put in your own, pull it out, put in somebody, Gatawan, pull it out, put in. I mean, it was back and forth like that, rewinding, hitting pause, reading through the, the, the cheap VCR, trying to hit pause on something that's not it was hard uh and worthy and awesome and great uh he also so he uh also taught me the value of record keeping uh with uh, at one point i came into practice and he kicked me out and he said you have to go home and i said why this is my senior year he said why he said because for the last two years you've pulled your hamstring this week and i looked at him like he lost his mind like you you've kept track of that so i got kicked out of practice for <laughs> never missing okay and i went and whatever went home <laughs> went home and didn't know what to do and and sure enough i didn't pull my hamstring that week um and so what it, uh, but the 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 gift of always have the right equipment for your athlete always give them the resources they need get out of their way uh and know when to get in their way um that that art uh of of that i still carry with me and in, in, in how i approach the event hmm. yeah I don't think we answered your question but, at all. But then we, 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 <laughs> but we went to Earl. I love that. We went to, okay. I went down to Earl and uh, yeah. learned a lot from Earl. He's great. Uh, he's, he's awesome. And the way he approached it, when I first heard how he took kids through being a beginner, changed the way uh, I, I started beginners. Um, so we, I threw everything out and started it his way for quite a long time. Found uh, at least my version of how he does it. Uh, took kids down into some some pitfalls that take work to get out the way that I was doing it prior took kids down other pitfalls and other barriers that then you had to unpack and pick at a little bit um the easy one is do you put your elbow in on a swing up or don't you um is 
and different coaches have different theories on that. And, and I've seen both work for different kids and I've seen both fail for different kids. And so we, uh, Carolina, speak for you a little bit. We, we tend <laughs> to try not to go with that there's a single right way to do this or a single right answer, but rather th- the right one is the one that fits. A, a, a size 10 shoe doesn't fit everybody and nor too does a single thing in vault. I mean, there's tenants that are true. The faster kid tends to go higher. The kid with the taller plant tends to go higher. Um, but but there's a lot of room for style here. Right. Um, and not Which every is book. fun because it's the never ending problem to solve, right? Because Exa- exactly. every kid that shows up is a little bit different. They're different between their ears and then they're also physically different and solving each one of them is so fun. And then college <laughs> or post collegiate, okay. you start getting different ones of different injuries. And so now you have to coach. It's not about coaching perfect technique. It's about coaching the perfect technique that this person can do that won't blow out their shoulder. Am I speaking to you right now? <laughs> that, won't, <laughs> yeah. that, won't, that won't blow out your shoulder and set you back six months or force a retirement when you don't want it. It's like, okay, well, I would like to do this, but that'll kill you. So we can't. And now what? Um, and yeah, that for me is fun. Uh, is still like how to, how to work around it. So how long did it take you guys to get there, though? I have this theory that um, if you stay in the sport long enough, you get to this point where you realize there's no models and mm-hmm. you, you end up coaching towards the athlete. And, but uh, from my experience, you always start by grabbing onto like a book or a coach and learning their way. And then you start to deviate from that when you find things like, hey, this doesn't work the way that I think it should. So do you guys remember, like, uh, it probably was gradual over time, I'm sure, but do you sounds like you was bell kind of like your first model you had or the way he Maybe. did things i don't know uh, i had a whole well you had a whole model the way you were doing it before you met bell yeah i mean the paul Hurdon model <laughs> and, yeah i mean he was a great coach we we're really lucky to have him because yeah. most women's teams when they were starting up didn't have a vault coach mm-hmm. so um so yeah was, i kind of had my own synthesis of yeah. a whole lot of different things and then um I think you just have to be wrong enough times. Yeah. At least for me, I feel like I just had to make enough, you know, <laughs> you coach for a little bit and you start having some success and you think you're pretty good at this. And then you coach a little bit more and you realize you don't know anything. It's just like life, right? You can't tell an 18 year old anything. They already know everything, right? And there's that <laughs> age of coaching too. And where they do. They really do know everything that they know. That they know. Yeah. But there's an attitude of that, like, you know, right. whether it's growing up or whether it's growing in coaching or growing in a profession or a degree or whatever and then there's that point also as you get a little older or a little more experienced where you realize like I do know a lot and I don't know the half of it yet <laughs> like yeah, there's so, so much more the more I know the, the, the more I, I know I don't know <laughs> yeah and so I know I went through those phases of development too as a coach and made some mistakes with kids and made some bad calls and Luckily, I keep really good notes because I don't like making the same mistake yeah. again. But you also, you know, when you hear a coach say something, you're like, I would never say that. And then three years later, you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to say it. <laughs> and because that. you have the kid right then that needs to hear that. I had a kid and oh, I maybe shouldn't even admit this on here. <laughs> I told her to shut her eyes after her plant. She was such a mess in the air. And close your eyes after your plant like how scary is that I'm like but make sure you're still listening to me because I'm gonna speak up if anything goes is there any type of disclaimer for this yeah. conversation we're <laughs> having right now okay so I, mean, I think it's she important. jumped 25 centimeters higher she was third in the big 10 like she jumped great with her eyes shut in, she jumped terrible with her eyes closed that is a cardinal like do not do this don't do this people yeah that's anybody terrib- listening to yeah. this that's one kid in the yeah. thousands we've coached <laughs> everybody else keep yeah. your eyes open yeah keep your eyes open well I had Joe Dial but tell you, me to pull on the pole once and mm-hmm. that was one of those like yeah, Cardinal like no. Sins yeah, again too. that's just another four-letter word, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't say Paul. that. Say the P you're word. Get, you said Paul. You're gonna grow hair on your chest, right? <laughs> yeah. Palms or something. <laughs> no, but yeah, but he explained it like it, it's just he. It was his way of explaining to keep pressure on the pole. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I mean, and there's a lot of ways to explain. I know you guys are talking about something a little bit different. Yeah. But some kids just need to hear that out of the box, weird thing that might just fit into their puzzle pieces and won't fit into anybody else's. Yeah, and especially when you're looking at someone who's physically should be able to do everything you're asking them to and they can't do it and you have to get real creative in how you explain it that same kid I made her travel a skid box in her suitcase the poor kid (laughs) because she couldn't like Mm -hmm. warm up like a normal athlete she just had to warm up on the track and start from her full approach she couldn't do the transitions so she 
spend you know, our junior and senior year with a you know, wood skid box in our travel bag. <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the end of the day, you know, I mean, you coach a kid and here's how I want you to do it because it's going to go higher, it's going to go higher, it's going to go higher, and it's not. All right, you can actually go higher doing this slight thing wrong. Okay, it's your senior year. I'm desperate. It's, let's do that well. Let's do that really well. Yeah. You're going to be the best kid. The, the, the when I first threw this out overtly was I had a there was a girl early in in the late 90s. There was a girl who could go higher on clearing on her back. She did not have the core strength to be able to pole vault the. Uh, down more of the standard technique but good lord she could get upside down and she could go over on her back and go significant so i could she could jump perfectly and it would go about a foot lower well she was right on the edge of state or not what am i going to do and it's her senior year and we got two weeks let's get great at going over your back let's right. let's, <laughs> let's just let's just you for like putting your ego aside and, and doing that well and that's what a lot it was. of coaches just, can't do that it, well you see you st- it, i think that's part of that I, gradation of coaching growing is, yeah just, just being like what does this kid need right now right the the best the best coaches we see do that though right. they they do it in one version or another um, with one with in one way or another they'll get the other brand of poles if the kid you know swears that they're fine you know whatever or that the d1 level where they got the money to do that right. um, they, they'll 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 sell out on that because they care about the kid and they want the kid to achieve and so this is what Steve did yeah. for his athletes <laughs> get the other poles yeah. it's, it was always about the poles yeah each kid had their own line it seemed like <laughs> There were several close. lines. That's, 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 most, that's all right. That's now I get to true. use them all. It's great. Yeah, okay. We've got this it's terrific set. Yeah. <laughs> um, we got about, let, let's go for an hour. Okay. Right. That's, unless you guys yeah, want to yeah, wire school yeah. with me. Um, I'd like to maybe just talk a little bit about, uh, oh, you guys. Yeah, if you don't mind, yeah. how, how the poll system works. Like, <laughs> um, I, get, I get questions about that all the time, and I don't know if you feel comfortable doing that or not. But like, um, About how flight tech works? Yeah, I guess how flight tech works, how the pole renting kind of system comes out. Do you guys do mm-hmm. three at a time? Is that how you said you were so, doing it? So uh, originally the, 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 the day one concept was uh, how can I, for the price of buying a pole, how can I get a kid three poles? So the kid could have a pole to warm up on. And in Minnesota, if it's snowing, you, that's your same pole you'll compete on uh, or raining at Big Tens. Um, yeah. So you can come from a shorter breath. So how, what's your, what's your uh, come hell or high water? Even if it's snowing, even if you're bleeding, this can be the pole you can make a bar on. What's that pole? So what's the first pole? What's the one that you normally need when the weather's all right? Never, there's no real excuses. And then what's a pole you've never been on before? And so what's three? So but instead of buying one, here's three. And once you would uh, advance on to that one you've never been on before, the new big one, uh, you would then exchange the starting pole for the next new big one. So the idea was that the kid would always have three. It, in it quickly turned it with the renting to coaches saying, well, instead of buying one, I'll rent one for this kid, one for that kid, and one for this other kid. And now everybody still had one. So, Which so makes the, sense. The, they had three kids that needed a pole. And so, they had three kids yeah. that needed a pole, and they didn't have the money. And so, the, again, the logistics of it overrode that vision. Um, it's still the vision of how to do it, but it... Um, but no, that was uh, uh, right now. You can rent one at a time. You can rent five at a time. You can do whatever. Um, uh, so, currently, what what's happening more and more, and this has actually stopped us from from really being able to get to six hundred poles, is uh, people keep buying their rentals. So they'll they'll rent it and they rent it and they're paying about a third to rent the pole, and then at the end of the season, they're just buying out the rest, the other two thirds of the pole, and then they get to keep it. Okay. Um, and so kind of because of how schools roll their budgets in July. Yeah. So if there's money left, they're like, well, most ADs, most principals have a have a fund that they're keeping for graduation and any little sort of craziness that happens at the end of the year, a surprise. But it's also June 30th in Minnesota and Wisconsin. Anyways, the money starts over uh, and it doesn't roll over because districts want to pull all that back. And so principals. So to everyone listening, I would say. Uh, prime your principals and your athletic directors with at the end of the year if there's an extra hundred bucks that you can't spend on anything you could buy the second third of that poll and then july 1st buy the third third of the poll and now you own you do some split billing it's legal um it's just an extended rental um and uh and it turns into you got to walk away with the poll uh and the school got to recover money that they otherwise weren't going to be able to so so really it's it, renting has turned into this silly way to buy polls 
Okay. Um, a coach will, their senior, uh, put on all sorts of weight during football season. Now they need a 14 foot 200. I don't want to buy a 14 foot 200. Great. I'll rent it. Great. But now the senior graduates, you don't still want that 14 foot 200. Great. You give it back to me. You can exchange it for a different pole and you can buy that pole out. Um, so there's been every version of renting to buying uh, that has happened. This last year, there was a school in Minnesota that intentionally got, got a good chunk of money and they were going to buy 15 poles in one shot. And they chose to rent 15 to start with. They were able to make a couple exchanges as their needs change throughout the year and then at the end still finish out and buy out those 15. And so they're happy. They're getting ready to do it again. Uh, it's working out to be a great way for them to be dynamic in their needs. Um, most common question I get when people call me, and I'm sure you get more, Sean, because people are calling you all the time. <laughs> most common question I get is, okay, we can buy one pole. What should I get? Right. <laughs> you should you should buy a 13 foot 200 right. because it will never bend. It will never break. And that will work for everyone on your team. Exactly. Um, and I've coached high schools to actually do that. And it's straight pole and a good athlete can go male athlete can go 10 feet on a straight pole uh in high school and there you just scored at a lot of meets right with with some nine and ten foot kids yep. safely uh good technique good swing straight pole three and four hundred bucks gets you in and out the door not expensive right not prohibitive anyway yeah um, i stole that from you <laughs> honestly <laughs> well, it makes sense <laughs> yeah well and, and then sometimes if they have a little success then the parents do the renting instead of the school or whatever mm -hmm. so so how, how did you protect poles then like um from damage and things like that so the so we throw a layer of tape on it which is our brand it also uh it it, it puts a fresh layer on there it's all cosmetic uh but it shows off if any new damage happens should you um, give them a plug <laughs> Who do we get the tape from? Who do we get the tape from? A different company. Now it's oh, just it's somebody not, on the, oh, online now. Just like wrestling tape. <laughs> yeah, Amazon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Never <laughs> mind. Yeah. I thought it was yeah, still no. the same company. Um, and uh, yeah, so we just put a layer of tape on it. And uh, and honestly, with that. Floor that, tape, right? Not like yeah, it's, uh, tape. it's a vinyl tape. And uh, that, that stops 90% of spikings from actually hitting the material of the pole. Okay. Um, and then, uh, and then beyond that, I built a machine that actually tests them, so I can throw a full bend on it. And if it blows up, uh, then we know it got damaged. And if it doesn't blow up, we know it's not damaged. That the damage is not structural. And he had so, one go once that brought all the neighbors out. <laughs> I don't know what they thought it happened. Yeah, this was in your garage. Right? Yeah, it's in my garage. Yeah, and so when it goes, it sounds like a gunshot. And, I think it was uh, Jack's like sixteen five two twenty or something oof. blew in the garage. It was so yeah. loud. And it went through like the first one that blew through because the garage lines up against our living room here. And so the first one that blew, it again sounded like a gunshot. And and Caroline goes run out to the garage and she's like, "Are you okay?" And I said, is that all you're worried about? <laughs> because this pole was sticking into the sheetrock into the drive into the garage. <laughs> and I was nervous that it had actually blown through the sheetrock into the living room. Um, wow, I didn't hear I that. I survived that one. Story. We turned the flexor around after that. <laughs> yeah, we turned the machine around. And so now it blows mostly the other direction now. <laughs> did you make this thing or where yeah. did this come from? Yeah. You just made it. Yeah, okay. I just knew, figured out what it needed to do. and. Kept working until I got him. Got it to do. You say it no non, or just no, so nonchalantly. The way I've heard that same story from Stevie Keller up at NDSU was, "Do you hear what Steve White's doing down in his garage down there? He rents out these poles. He bends it, and he says, hey, if it comes back, I'm gonna put it in the bender. You can either buy it now, or it's gonna put it in the bender, and it might break. It's up to you. Whatever you do. Yeah, and it's funny watching people debate in the driveway. Oh, so that you know, did happen. So no, they, it does they, happen because yeah. we're like, well, there's a big ding yeah. in this. We're going to, if we take it back, we're bending it because we're going to flex test it before we give it to somebody else. It's somebody else's right. kid on that, <laughs> you know? Um, well, and, but then you see them think it over. Yeah, and I always, I, mean, I always think like, are you crazy? You're going to take that home and have somebody jump on it <laughs> without right. testing it, right. you know? But in some but, cases it'll be, they were just jumping on it. They spiked it, it at regions. Yeah. They used it at the state meet. Through all sorts of bends on it over and over again. It's not as damaged as a lot of the stuff that's in their inventory. And so they're looking <laughs> at it like then they and they know how far I have to bend it to recertify it. So okay, are you 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 get the call. And this is all clearly laid out ahead of time. Everything's laid out ahead of time. There's no surprises. Nobody's feeling right. like what? Yeah. You didn't tell me. No, I did. Right. Yeah, yeah. everybody knows. And so so they uh, as a consequence though, everybody really treats the polls really, really well. They hardly ever um, break. 
We hardly ever get one back and have it break. No, almost it's always really it's a uncommon. big waste of time at the end of the season when I have to reflex a couple hundred sticks and and it's just me sitting there going away at flexing these poles and nothing happens. And but it was a big game changer for our just peace of mind, I think, because when we were first renting, we didn't have this. And so we just, if there was any visual damage, we made people buy it because we were, we were too nervous to put, or to be in charge investment. of deciding whether or not some other person's kid could be on this pole without knowing if it was good well, or not. And we yeah. can't jump on them all. Well, you know? when we first started, we used to be able when to. we first started, I really did jump on <laughs> everyone. Then we got older. That was the test. Was <laughs> I went, Steve was the, the, I was was the flex test. <laughs> yep, I would do a big old bad bend on it yeah. and attempt to get it to go. And if it, if I didn't break it, then okay, it's okay. Um, then Henry was born. And then I saw everyone else's children in a slightly different light as, oh, you're somebody's Henry. Oh, I should, oh. I got to get a little better at this than, and the inventory grew to a space that I can't jump on a 15 foot 200. Right. And so right. uh, without breaking me, I won't be able to test it at all. So I had to invent this thing. And so, so yeah, so it works really well. And it's, it's worked really well to, to um, serve a lot of kids in, in this region with, uh, the coaches then know they can rent a pole, and it is as good as new. Um, it's as not good as new as well. Right. It can still bust. It can still break just like it's anything can break. It's a pole, and we're bending it for Pete's sake. Um, but at the end of the year, that's why people are really confident enough to, to buy them out. Well, and people, you know, a coach takes over a program and sees 25 poles from who knows how many different decades lying in a shed, you know, right. hum along if you've heard this one. And they don't know if they're safe. We've had people show up with a bag of poles and they have us bend them all too and see what lives and what's still good before they put their athletes on it. Cause it's, you or know. put 15 bucks into a sticker and a weight label and a new plug and any of the rest of it. Let's see if it see dies if it first. Lives, yeah. Right. And then if it lived, okay, great. Now let's go get it certified. So, so yeah. So we're helping a lot of, uh, in that way we're, it's not really recycling, but rather resurrecting. You're just allowing more people to pole vault, really, because it's an goal. expensive event. Right. The goal is to get it down so that if you're on, you know, if you're not a rich kid, you'll still have full access. That it isn't that you really can do this. Right. So that's awesome. Yeah. So we'll. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> it keeps growing. Yeah. 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 We now get a site in Madison. So we got a second site now. Oh, I didn't rentals know that. Out of, yep. Yeah, we sort of franchised. <laughs> no, that's totally franchise. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, so our buddy Joel is down there and he's doing, we're, we're, it's our polls and uh, we got a deal going with him. And so it's a whole second site. So his brother-in-law, that first Big Ten champion way back <laughs> for really? me. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's funny cool. how those connections yeah. end up being yeah. important too. So is it a club down there that he has that? Or just uh, another, a little bit, but mostly garage. at the high school, right? Yeah, he's a yeah. high school teacher, high okay. school coach, and yeah, yeah. and great um, guy. Really into pole vault. Wanted to try it. We trust him. That's he's pretty a great cool. person. So, yeah. So you guys interested in doing that more down the road? People are need information or want information about how to <laughs> maybe rent. Right? So yeah, yeah, it's so expensive <laughs> to start somebody up. Yeah, I get a lot of emails from clubs and, and high school coaches who are talk. They want to do something like this, and you've. You guys have done it better than anyone I've ever seen. So we've had certainly had people call and ask about it. You know, it's we built it so slowly over time and nobody else was doing it. So that was part yeah, of, that, I think, why it was able to grow to the level that it's at. And starting a new site with 100 poles or whatever, it's, it's a lot We're you know, we're just funding it. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's so uh, it's definitely a one site at a time thing. But I think. It went well last year. Yeah, at first, at first, getting it off the ground was the challenge. Was people didn't understand it and didn't know it existed. Now you can rent from. There's lots of places around the country that are doing it. Mostly, yeah. it's clubs who use it to help out their club athletes, and in some ways, are using it to grow their club. With hey, if you were one of our club athletes, we'll let you use some of our poles, and isn't that a great thing? So now, guess what? Now you're signing up for this club. So there's almost this little loop of you know we'll get kids in and and it it's fine if that's good for the kids and if that's good for pole vault and all that not judging that's not what we're doing for us it was about uh facilitating the coaches the high school coaches and the high school athletes to be able to have the access and the stuff that they need here um to get to the second site yeah the, the good lord we've been doing this now this is 18 years this will be our this will be our eight, 19th season wow. of doing renting in some capacity. And it took 
it, it was all money in for 12 years of just to keep growing it and growing it and growing it. I didn't it. care because I didn't live in that apartment anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, <laughs> you know, and like, like taking money from, oh, Flight Deck paid for the computer to be able to do Flight Deck or it paid for the website to be able to do it. Like it didn't really net anything. No. For It was just for the 2.0 version. The first version was, hey, let's get a lot of polls. And then... Caroline said, stop having it cost 50% of the income. <laughs> that 2.0 was, okay, it's got to be free. Uh, and then 3.0 was, it'd be, it'd be nice if this actually, like the time you're putting into it, at least matched in some way the time of what coaching would do. Right. Of high school coaching and, and that kind of thing. Well, I think that's just, we'll end on this, so I don't want to yeah. take any more of you guys' yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> but like the misconception is like in, in pole vault, it, everything has to be free all the time. And I in that that mentality is good to a point where you can't grow without the fuel to grow a right. club or a sport or a business anymore so and i don't know how you guys feel about that but I've, i really took that from you where you were like you need to prov- if, if you're giving something away you need to have some kind of value yeah coming back, and we it's- volunteered a lot for vault i mean we've done tons of years at the u and and whatnot so we we're not a above doing that too i think it's good for people to volunteer their time for things that they're passionate about yeah um but when it's a huge percentage of your time time yeah and you know just like any other job that you'd be doing you'd expect some compensation for it well this is a huge investment yeah i mean i gotta gotta, gotta rent a stick i gotta rent a stick at least three times to to break break even even on it yeah um and that in, in macro, okay, fine. It, you know, but it, nobody's getting rich on this. No. Nobody's. This is okay. We're helping a lot of kids, right. and and it's it's keeping itself alive. And we're trying a second site, um, and because shipping costs to and from with a rental, uh, yeah, every, everybody knowing buying buying a pole, shipping's expensive. Well, if you got to ship it and then ship it back because you're returning it, the two shippings cost too much plus the rental is silly so so shipping has never really yet been easily solved um and keeps it keeps it some radius about about a city um but yeah so the second site thing is really a test we're really testing to see is this actually possible or not yeah does this help does this pull is it is it worth the is it worth the time for joel down in madison to do this is it worth his time and his time and trouble to do this um how does how does that work for him how does that work for us it's a, a, a safe estimate of a 10 year to break even for us on doing this but it's uh but we're testing it again we're not into uh the the, the why behind doing this is still grounded in the we want help, athletes to have kids, access helping coaches right. helping ha- change lives yeah uh, through this very fun and very uh very frustrating uh, yeah. event well that access matters so much you know i have kids come to the u and you know the difference between the kid that might get some money to go to college and the kid that is hoping to walk on often is where'd they live right <laughs> not necessarily what kind of talent they have necessarily and so i don't like that <laughs> i no, want you know yeah. i want them to have access to and i've just always to the development that they yeah. want or that they could have um and this is our little way of trying to do that yeah and i've just approached it from the other side and that's why the vlogs are still going yeah because it's hard to get the the knowledge the information about the sport there's not a lot out there so yeah. that was my kind of way to give back without yeah Plus, they're super fun to watch. Bank account. <laughs> <laughs> well, <and> the, <laughs> the boys and I love them. <laughs> well, and the free, giving away the polls for free, like you can use this, all sounds real good, but that doesn't grow anything. There's exactly. no way to actually get that to help more. That yeah, it doesn't scale people. up That further. was my point. Yeah. Is like it, if you can rent it, you could buy more polls and help more kids down the road. But right. yeah, if you just keep giving things away for free, it, eventually you just burn out. So those yeah. that are doing it, is, it's great that they're doing that. But if they're not actually putting the money back into more polls, then they're not actually then the the amount that they're helping is fixed it's a wash and we're still trying to grow how the impact of of our assistance on this but the life cycle of the vaulter the life cycle of of the vault enthusiast is very real where people are like they're all in this and this is everything (laughs) and this is they're watching the video and they're they're posting things and they're asking questions and they're getting in debates and and they're all and then <laughs> and then they get a little tired or and then they have a kid or two and then and then life changes and then suddenly they're not into it anymore and and most people at some point stop 
um, for a while or forever. Uh, it's it's very rare. We're that, the odd ones out on this. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. In, in very real terms, like we can you, we see we see coaches in, around in this area who are there. They're like first, well, they're at our camps and we're coaching them. Some of the top coaches in Minnesota right now, we coached them when they were kids, um, yeah. and now they and coached them even in college and coached them after college, and now they're running clubs and they're doing their thing and they're growing their thing and it's like and it's then really cool. and then they get married and then they have a kid or two and then it starts getting hard yeah. and then and then I'd rather go to see my own kid's soccer game <laughs> than coach somebody else's kid uh, yeah. over ten feet right. and you know like th- this is the reward. Uh, um, and that's okay. It's still good for Vault. It's still part of it. Who's the next kid who's going to come in and, and be all enthusiastic? And how can we help that coach too? And I think um, I think the cool part of what you said is though is like if you're that enthusiastic about especially this event, that doesn't go away. Like it's in there. So if even if you see it on TV or maybe that their kids start pole vaulting, it's it seems to be that there's always that once a vaulter, always a vaulter. Yeah, kind of those a vibe masters too. start crawling out of the woodwork. Yeah, exactly. You know, when after the kids graduate, their kids like, leave. What are we gonna do like, now? I'm I guess I'm going to be again. a 60 year old pole vaulter. Yeah, those are so much fun to watch. <laughs> and we coach a, we coach yeah, a couple absolutely. of those guys around yeah. here too. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that and but but that's okay. Yeah. And it's that, like a that, really fit bowling league. So, <laughs> so one of our one of our things is how can we right now flight deck as far as the next space that uh, to take flight deck is how do we help people grow their clubs? How do we help people grow their their own while they're enthusiastic? How can we get them to be able to go even further, faster, and deeper into this um, so that they're more successful while they're into it? Maybe that'll sustain them longer, which well, is build good some for momentum. Kids. At the schools too, there's a lot of sports available. Kids can play a lot of different things, and so helping those coaches make be able to grow their athletes by having the right equipment. So when the kids come, it's fun, and they want to do it, not go play lacrosse. We want them to pull up. <laughs> Probably talk for another hour on that. Yeah, cause that's been USPBA conversations. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, yeah. So for us, that's where right. we're going, that's where we're taking. Flight that'll be the next. sequel then. Yeah, that'll be a sequel. We'll have to do this again. Yeah. But, um, I really appreciate your guys' time. This was a really fun first one. Thanks. First well, podcast. Unless I uh, don't post us. it first, but it was, yeah. this is the first time first. trying to do this. <laughs> in our living room with my kids in the background. <laughs> oh, it's great. This is good to see you guys again. Good to good see to you. Good to see you too. Appreciate Thanks it. for having so, us on. So, uh, flightdeckathletics.com? Yep. yep. Okay, so if anyone wants to check it out, get a hold of Steve and Caroline, flightdeckathletics.com. And yeah, we'll see. talk to you or right. email you or whatever. Yeah, support <laughs> you in any way we can. All right, see you guys. See ya. Thank you. That's it. What'd you guys think about the podcast? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what you think about Steve and Caroline. God, I love those guys. They're just, makes me feel good to be around them. Don't forget to check out team utcom Get yourself a book. And remember, there's more than one way to pole vault. I'll see you next time. I came from the mud. There's dirt on my hands. Strong like a tree. There's roots where I stand. Oh, I've been running from the law